Hi, everybody. It's a uh, quarter after 12 uh, Eastern time. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to ask questions uh, here while I have a moment before I'll be tied up on uh, TV on, on Fox Weather. And by the way, let me just say, if you uh, are not familiar with Fox Weather, it's a weather service you can get on your phone and you can actually watch the channel, the continuing coverage on your phone for free. So if you download the Fox Weather app and click in the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna be on um, this afternoon at three o'clock from the studio. Usually I work from my uh, hurricane bunker here, but uh, today I will be in the studio talking about uh, Hurricane uh, Idalia, what we think will be Hurricane Idalia uh, pretty soon, uh, along with Ian Oliver, who's on from uh, three to six in the afternoon. So anyway, that's coming up, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to ask uh, questions here. Um, I already see a question coming in from Clearwater. Tina, uh, you need to be listening in Clearwater for, uh, especially Clearwater Beach and, and parts of Clearwater for evacuation orders from Pinellas County. Uh, last I heard, they had not issued mandatory evacuations, but uh, the, the areas that are near the coast are, almost have to be evacuated based on the National Hurricane Center forecast. I, I'm not sure they're thinking because I wasn't uh, able to listen in on their uh, discussion. But uh, anyway, you need to pay very, very close attention to what's going on uh, there in, in, uh, with your, your county orders. All right, let me go through what's going on with the storm and then, well, then I'll address the questions that uh, we have coming in. So, so here we are, uh, this is the 11 a.m. advisory, 65 mile an hour winds is the estimate from the National Hurricane Center. But what we see here is this curved band wrapping up around the center, which is up in here. And that's a sign that the system is getting better organized. Obviously, part of the air flowing into the system is coming over land here, and it's running into uh, some terrain in Cuba over here. So until it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it's not going to have uh, the sort of pristine environment that it will eventually have in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's why the Hurricane Center is expecting it uh, to intensify. There you see the computer analysis. In fact, just in the new computer model coming in, it moved the center just a little bit there. And in a developing system, very often one of the issues is you don't know exactly where the center is, so it's hard to forecast where the center is going, and a slight amount of difference can make a difference in the end. So. We'll see when we get the new round of com uh, computer forecasts in this afternoon, then the National Hurricane Center will adjust their forecast, uh, taking all of those into account. So I don't know if you saw my post on Facebook uh, this morning. It was also on foxweather.com and on hurricaneintel.com. But uh, I pointed out that people ask me all the time, what's the best model? What do you look at? And I say the best information, the best model is the National Hurricane Center forecast because they take into account all of the ones, then they have a, a process of figuring out which ones are performing the best, and then they use that. Obviously, that doesn't always yield the, the, the answer, the final answer, but it's rare that a storm goes outside of the cone, the center of the storm. The impacts are almost always outside the cone, but it's rare that the center goes outside the cone. So look at the National Hurricane Center forecast. I look at the models to see how much spread there is. So if one model's over here and another one's over there, and then I have a sense that, okay, there's uncertainty in this. If they're kind of bunched together, we have more sense of certainty in what the forecast is. Uh, but it's not always true. Sometimes all the models are wrong in the same direction. Not so often. Generally, uh, a smart averaging of the models is the best that we can do, and that's what the National Hurricane Center does when they make their forecast. That's why I always urge everybody to uh, look at that and follow that. So there is the Hurricane Center forecast based on their analysis of all of the information available, everything that you can see on the Internet plus more, and the thinking is that the storm will intensify, and the forecast is right now for when it's in this area on Wednesday morning. And the morning, in this case, means uh, nominally 8 a.m. Eastern time. 
but obviously it can be plus or minus. So for, I would say from just before sunrise to the morning hours of Wednesday, we should expect the center of the storm to be near the coast, somewhere near the coast from uh, Tampa on up to south of Tallahassee, somewhere near the coast. That's what we should expect. Here's the thing. The weather tomorrow is already going to start deteriorating, and here's why. When the storm is down in here, what's driving it and why it's going to suddenly kind of leap out of the Caribbean and move north is there's a dip in the jet stream coming like this, and that's going to kind of help it surge north. Well, that dip in the jet stream is also going to pull moisture out of it and kind of squally weather out of it and push that well ahead of the actual center of the storm. So unfortunately, tomorrow is not going to be a nice day. It's going to spread kind of south to north up, the, up into the peninsula of Florida. So uh, if they're you know, thinking about having evacuations tomorrow or, or uh, things like that, that's a little bit scary. That, that that's all going to happen um, tomorrow. So anyway, keep that in mind. If you're thinking about that you might evacuate, you, you know, if the weather is not good tomorrow, that's going to slow down uh, that uh, process. All right, let's look close up here. Now, the thing I want to remind you is the, the, the center of the cone goes up here into the key of Cedar Key. Anybody in Cedar Key, you need to be ready for a very strong hurricane tomorrow. And when they forecast 115, you get ready for 125 or 130. So you, you have to just build that in. Uh, they're not trying to forecast any kind of oh, maybe a worst case or anything. They're forecasting what they think is going to happen with wind. It's not true of storm surge. It is true with wind. They forecast what they think is going to happen. So you have to be ready for this range. And we say if they're forecasting a Category 3, a low end category three, be ready for a low end category four, which would be 130 miles an hour. Now, the center of the cone goes into Cedar Key, but according uh, to the current forecast, but remember, even if the storm is there, let me draw a circle there, the, the winds are coming around like this, and I'll talk more about that in a second. So, this is putting strong wind off the Gulf into the Tampa Bay area, and this is what drives water against the, the coast there, and this is why. There's all this concern for storm surge. But I want you to remember Hurricane Ian last year. What did it do? It tracked down the right side of the cone. If that happens, it's going to put ever so much stronger wind into Tampa Bay, pushing water from the Gulf, filling up the bay, overflowing in the bay. Uh, all the, so the neighborhoods all around the bay, the inner bay peninsula on, on the both sides of it, uh, downtown Tampa, up into Old Tampa Bay and Hillsborough Bay, this is all potentially very dangerous with just a slight wobble of the storm to the right. Still going to be water rise, but it just depends tremendously on whether there's a slight wobble to the right or not. Here's what the analysis is from the Hurricane Center on the size of the 40 mile an hour wind. So the yellow, I didn't draw that very well, but you get the idea. The size. Now, the, the reason that the, the wind here center doesn't line up exactly with the, the colors is because this is a computer model and it's not, the timing is slightly different. It's essentially the same, but it's slightly different. But so you understand these, the, these uh, wind uh, colors. This is where they think the winds of 40 miles per hour or higher will be. This is where they think hurricane gusts will be, so over 75 miles per hour. And this is where the hurricane sustained winds will be. And the strongest winds in the hurricane will be in that core there, which you see is relatively small. But look at this. This, if this core goes up in the cone. It, it's not that far from Tampa Bay. So the slightest jog to the right puts uh, sustained hurricane force winds into Tampa Bay, and then the storm surge is ever so much higher and, and uh, so forth. But you also see that 40 mile an hour winds way down here, and then extrapolate this all north, and you can see that the northern two thirds of the peninsula is going to feel um, this, uh, this hurricane uh, by that point. In terms of what warnings are out uh, now, and then we'll talk about exactly what these warnings mean, 
the storm surge warning goes from south of Tallahassee, and a storm surge warning nominally means three feet or higher of storm surge. So when, when you get an alert on your phone, you are in a storm surge warning area. What they're telling you is that the water from the Gulf or the Bay is expected to rise or could rise. Let me, not, let me rephrase that properly. Could rise more than three feet above normal high tide. So, you know, walk down to the water, three feet higher is halfway up most people. And, if, and that water is moving with the force of a hurricane behind it. So that is a deadly level. So when the warning of a storm surge goes up, they're telling you where that could happen. This isn't like the wind. This isn't what they think is most likely to happen, and it could be more and it could be less. This is, is sort of like the worst reasonable case. So it's what you have to prepare for since it's a deadly, the storm surge is a deadly uh, situation if you underestimate it. So uh, this is the area of highest concern. And then south there, that line goes down to uh, Englewood, actually, uh, down near Charlotte Harbor. And then on south, the, the watch means it could go over three feet. Looking at it in more detail here, let's zoom in, first of all, from uh, Tampa Bay North. And what you see here is the, the core of where the storm surge is expected to be if the, if the storm goes kind of down the middle of the cone or a little bit one way or the other is in the nature coast there with up to 11 feet. Obviously, 11 feet of water above normal high tide is deadly. Nobody should be exposing themselves to that there in the nature coast. And then farther south there, when you get down to uh, just north of the um, Tampa Bay area, but this is, so the Tampa Bay metropolitan area is pretty much there. So just north of there, up to nine feet. And in the Tampa Bay area, up to seven feet above normal high tide is what the Hurricane Center is saying should be prepared for, which by the way is the same forecast that they initially had for Fort Myers Beach. Now, this storm is not in, the situation is different, but the vulnerability is similar. The, the vulnerability of uh, all the beaches along from Clearwater Beach on down south and north along Boquee, all along there is similar to the vulnerability of Fort Myers Beach. And then in Tampa Bay is a whole different thing because Tampa Bay is like a catcher's mitt. So when the water comes in there, it can't get out. It can only build up. So that's why there is that kind of threat there. We can look at this uh, closer. You see where the yellow areas are. Those are the areas most prone to flooding. So it's not everywhere, and sometimes it's not right at the coast because it's been built up and something has happened to change uh, the situation right at the coast. I can kind of pan this around. You can see, look as we get up toward downtown Tampa up here. You see the yellow areas. The blue areas where it would be somewhat less because the land is higher, but the yellow areas are the high threat zones. And you notice it's all around Tampa Bay. And again, not always right at the coast because the water comes in inlets and in rivers and creeks and any place that's open, that's where the water is going to go and it's going to find low ground. So here you see, and let's look over at St. Pete Beach. Look at all of St. Pete Beach here is under water and, and parts of St. Petersburg itself have, have this storm surge threat. If the water comes in at this, uh, you know, if the storm were to shift a little bit to the right and it would be a worse case. If, if it doesn't do that, still gonna have water coming into Tampa Bay. Still water against all these beaches, but not in this up to seven feet range. Maybe it's up to three feet. Maybe it's up to two feet. Maybe it's up to four feet. We can't pin it down, but we need to be ready for it to be up to seven feet. That's what uh, all this means. All right, then we go farther south and we see up to five feet down uh, uh, in the Venice area. Uh, and then up to four feet is potential, even down in southwest Florida. Uh, again, if the storm were to shift to the right a little bit, were to grow in size uh, a little bit, were to get a little stronger, all these effects are magnified and the National Hurricane Center doesn't want anybody to be caught in these areas without uh, where these forecasts are anywhere along here without having awareness of the potential threat. 
in the Keys, there, because the, the, the wind is going to be coming in this direction, it pushes water into Florida Bay. So the threat in the Keys is mostly on the bay side. So just keep that in mind. It's especially a marine threat. But there'll be some local flooding in the Florida Keys, uh, up to two feet of storm surge. All right, what is storm surge? Just to be absolutely clear, I don't want anybody to uh, no, watching this uh, feed to not be 100% clear what storm surge is. So here we are on an average day, and we all are familiar with high tide. You go to the beach, the tide comes in, that's the high tide. Okay, when we have storm surge, what's going to happen is that wind is going to push on up against that water. And the, that, that's going to, as you may have seen, when the wind is blowing hard off the water, the water comes in a little bit higher. And so what happens when we get that wind, it pushes the water up. And if the wind is super strong, it really pushes the water up. And obviously, we end up with an unsurvivable situation in this kind of situation. So the storm surge is the height above the normal high tide. So when they say seven feet, they mean seven feet above the normal high tide, which nobody can survive. Uh, even three feet sweeps you off your feet. Even one foot can move your car and also would ruin your car because this is salt water we're talking about. So storm surge is the big, big threat. There's also wind, of course. Uh, if this comes in with 115 mile an hour winds or 120 or 110, uh, the hurricane warning for Winds over 75 goes way inland. The inland counties all are under the warning. And notice a hurricane watch means the possibility of hurricane force winds also includes places like Gainesville. In Orlando, uh, right now they've put up just a tropical storm watch, but the western suburbs or, or suburbs of Orlando have a hurricane watch. So because the winds will weaken as they come over land, generally the farther inland you get, the weaker they are. Uh, that's why all these watches and warnings are different. You'll get it on your phone, and you'll know what it is for your local area, but there's going to be a corridor across north central Florida somewhere where there's going to be widespread power outages, uh, trees down because the trees inland in central Florida and even some along the coast in, or in northern Florida and central Florida don't do well with high wind because their branches, they don't get super high wind very often. Branches, branches grow long, they twist, they come down, power goes out. Um, so there's going to be a corridor with this storm. So you need your hurricane supplies, hurricane preparedness. We'll talk more about that in a second. Then moving on to the Carolinas. And it, what happens in the Carolinas and Georgia really depends on what happens with the storm track. If the storm tracks offshore like this, you're going to end up with storm surge along here because the wind is going to be coming like that. And it's going to push water into uh, Charleston and the other bays and inlets all along uh, the Atlantic uh, coast there. If it goes inland, it's going to be more of a rain threat. And it can be a, a flooding rain threat because there's a cold front there. And a cold front plus a tropical system, you end up with um, a massive rain threat. OK, so let me, um, let's see. Um, some questions. How, how bad will the storm surge be in Charlotte Harbor? Susie wants to know. Uh, it's not going to be bad, but we're going to have an on, onshore flow. The National Hurricane Center is saying you could have up to four feet above normal high tide, but the, uh, you know, the odds are that it will be less than that. Uh, uh, Amy from Arcadia Again, we're talking about folks in Southwest Florida here because everybody in Southwest Florida is scared to death, obviously. Ian severely flooded my parents' home in Arcadia. Tell you what, let me uh, go back here to, uh, and we can talk about these areas more specifically. Okay, so there was actually, that was my map uh, for the uh, southern part of the state. Okay, uh, my, um, Ian flooded my parents' home in Arcadia. And what was described as a 500-year flood? Do you see anything like that happening with the Idalia? I don't see that happening in Arcadia. Arcadia is down uh, kind of north uh, east of Fort Myers, inland. So uh, we don't think that this is going to be an Arcadia problem. But, but flooding rain, uh, you're very likely beginning tomorrow to get rain there. But the flooding rain is more likely to be uh, farther north. Uh, with uh, with this system. Um, 
All right, any other uh, questions here? People writing in from all over. Let's see. Uh, do you think Palm Beach County has anything to worry about? I don't think there's anything to worry about. There's some effects in South Florida, uh, but most of this is going to be in the northern two-thirds of the peninsula. What do you think it will be like in Spring Hill? So Spring Hill is, let me go back. There's the Tampa. So Spring Hill, you see right there. Let me uh, go forward here and we'll take a look. So Spring Hill, uh, right along the water is going to be uh, the storm surge threat is significant, and Spring Hill is going to be on the right side of the storm most likely. So you know, hurricane preps are needed in that Spring Hill area north of Tampa, and uh, this is a good time to go over the hurricane preps. So, and by the way, uh, keep the questions coming. Uh, put a Q colon, if you would, be in front of the question. Uh, that, that'll help me find your question. But hurricane preps. So let me tell you what I would do right now if I lived in this corridor where I thought the power might go out. I would be getting Ziploc bags, fill them three quarters full, and jam your freezer with them. So you don't want any air in the freezer. You want to try and, and eliminate air in the freezer. Do not turn the refrigerator down. Put the refrigerator on the normal temperature. But freeze the freezer so that that, that will keep your refrigerator cold for at least a couple days longer if you don't open it too much. So that's number one. Number two is think about what you're going to do with your car. So in every hurricane, we have like hundreds, thousands of cars that get flooded because people park them in low areas. Most people kind of know in their neighborhood where the, when it rains, it floods. Don't park your car there and don't put it under a tree. If you can put it in a parking garage, great, but at least put it on high ground and try and get it away from, from a place where a tree could fall on it, for example. So that, you know, worse than having your car not be functioning uh, would be to have it wrecked. You know, worse than like having problems with your house would be to have your car wrecked too, right? So. Uh, this is a, a really important thing that you think about your car. Obviously, you want to think about batteries and charging everything and all the normal stuff. The one other thing is that if you can do it, the, is to get a one of those sheets, those plastic sheets you get that for uh, the painters get, uh, and and that they lay down so you don't you know get paint on the floors and and whatnot and put that in your tub and fill the tub three quarters full. That water you'll use to scoop out and flush the toilet if you lose water. So a, a painter's plastic sheet in the tub, three quarters full, and then you want to, uh, you don't need to go to the store and buy all the water. You don't need to freak out if there's no water in the, in the store, but you do want to have water to drink in case you lose your drinking water. You can put it in any kind of container just be sure you have water uh, to drink because after a storm, waiting to get water is like the worst possible thing. All right, what's uh, Marco Island look like? Well, Marco Island is probably going to see some storm surge, but not the worst of it. Somewhere in the three feet range looks like that would be the worst case there. Uh, Mandy wants to know, do you think this uh, storm could get stronger than a Category 3? And actually... Uh, I can do this, can I? Let me see. Uh, there we go. I, if I put that there, okay. Um, so, uh, do we think it could get stronger in Category Three? Uh, you know, the odds are not high, but the odds aren't zero either. Uh, when a storm rapidly intensifies, the where the top end is 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 uh, you know we don't have the ability to forecast the absolute. Top end, but yes, this, but the, the bottom line is this has the potential to be a very strong and very uh, damaging hurricane. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, highest winds expected for Tampa. Well, we're expecting hurricane force gusts at the least in Tampa. Uh, if the storm were to move a little to the right, you'd be talking about winds over 100 miles an hour uh, in Tampa. Conceivably, even more if the storm were 
to strengthen. So the you know the core of the storm isn't very big, and you know and and Tampa is pretty big, but not giant. The state of Florida is much bigger. So um, if for the worst of it, the storm would have to go to the right side of the cone, right up the right side of the cone. Anything to the left of that <clears throat> lowers the wind in Tampa. But uh, Wednesday, uh, we expect widespread power outages and uh, uh, some damage in the Tampa area from hurricane force gusts, at least. Uh, Okay, let me let me see. Okay, let me see. How about uh, Gainesville? Gainesville is a good question because obviously the giant university there, University of Florida, students have to do something. They are, I think, going to have to decide what they're going to do about uh, Gainesville because the all indications are that the uh, strong winds are going to come through Gainesville, knock out power, and so forth. It's not going to be a direct hit from a huge hurricane, but if a strong hurricane hits the coast and goes in that direction, it's going to be a, a you know, a hurricane uh, preparedness is going to be required in Gainesville, which is going to mean staying away from the windows, not parking cars under trees, having uh, basic supplies, batteries, and so forth uh, to stay informed. All that is going to be part of uh, being in Gainesville. Um, so let me see. Uh, uh, how, how will uh, Idalia remnants affect Virginia? Uh, I don't think Virginia, it doesn't look like Virginia is going to have a, a bad, but could be on the fringe. Uh, how is Idalia pronounced? It's Idalia, by the way, it's not Idalia or Idalia, it's Idalia. It's kind of a, a Spanish kind of name. Uh, when will Broward County start feeling the effects? Uh, the, there may be some rain tomorrow, but the effects in Broward are not going to be huge. And you, we could get some uh, gusty uh, winds in the southern part of the state, but this is a, a central and north Florida storm. Uh, Boynton Beach, uh, let me see. Boynton Beach from Chicago. Terrified any chance it will hit us. Fringe effects in, in Boynton Beach. Uh, we talked about Spring Hill. Yes, yeah, Spring Hill I'm very concerned about. Um, who was that in Spring Hill uh, that I just saw? Oh, this is Lisette. This is somebody different in Spring Hill. So Lisette, you and your friends, you need to talk to all your friends and, and uh, understand your situation there. You need to be in full hurricane preparation mode, whether that means evacuating or that means uh, just you know hunkering down with your batteries, your supplies, your as I talked about, cramming your refrigerator full of uh, Ziploc bags so they can freeze. Whatever you can do, you uh, you need to be doing that in Spring Hill and in the Spring Hill area in, in Brooksville and all around there uh, right now. Uh, a lot of folks in, in, the, on, in Southwest Florida, obviously everybody is very nervous there, um, but you're going to be on the fringe. I'm not saying that it, it couldn't be bad, but you're going to be on the fringe. Here's a question. Is this the final cone or is a possible move to the east? No, this is not the final cone. Every six hours, the next cone is going to come out at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Every six hours, the cone will be updated. And if there's some kind of emergency, it'll be updated more often than that, but generally every six hours. Uh, so, uh, and yes, the, that, that until this storm forms, especially we could, we could see shifts in the cone, but even after a storm formed, remember after Ian formed, we still saw shifts in the cone, although most of them were in that formidable stage after it crossed Cuba and it was still trying to get uh, organized. Most of the most of that shifting around was related to that. Although sometimes the the computer forecasts just don't handle what's going on upstream in the atmosphere that provides the steering uh, real well. That was the case with the American GFS model with Hurricane Ian. Um, so uh, yes, the cone could very well shift. Um, Chris asks, what can we expect in Orlando? He's in Longwood. In Orlando, uh, uh, gusty winds, power outages, trees down.
but not the core of the storm based on what we know now. You'll be on the fringe, but it'll be on the so-called dirty side of the storm. Uh, so a tropical storm warning is in effect for most of Orlando, although in Longwood, uh, you're a little bit more exposed there. So you know, expect winds gusting to at least near hurricane force. Um, so don't park your car under a tree, be ready for power, uh, power outages and so forth. Um, could it shift east? Yes, uh, as I was saying, there's still lots of time. Storm hasn't even formed yet. So, so it, you know, let's say it's likely that the center stays in the cone, but, oh, but the, notice that they have storm surge warnings for Tampa Bay, which is just outside the cone. So the, the effect of the storm surge is gonna be well south and the winds are gonna extend well south, but the core of the storm uh, is most often inside the cone, but the impacts are well outside the cone, especially on the right side. So especially to the east side or the south side, depending on how you look at it. The Manatee River. Yes, the Manatee River will be, the storm surge is forecast uh, in Manatee County. I think the forecast, is it up to seven feet or up to six feet in Manatee County? So yes, high water is expected in Manatee County. Why is that? Because the the uh, water is going to be pushed in off the ocean in Manatee County and or off the Gulf, I mean, the Gulf water will be, will be pushed in there. So that will, will uh, cause you know, the possibility of storm surge to be pushed into Manatee County. So uh, again, what I want everybody to do everywhere is learn and know the storm surge forecast for your local area if you're anywhere near water. It's on your phone. You can get it. You can also get it from Fox Weather. We'll try and keep you up to date, but it's so local that it's important that you look on your phone. Yes, Sharon, to just emphasize that, could it move east like Ian did? Yes, it absolutely could. Um, is it going to hit Naples? Uh, is it going to affect Naples? Somewhat, yes. Is it going to hit Naples? No. Um, if it takes a further eastern track, could it strengthen more and have bigger impacts in the Carolinas? Brandon wants to know. So the answer is, uh, if it stays just offshore, it's going to have different kinds of impacts, and the impacts, I think, in the Carolinas will be significant. The, the, the big threat overall in the Carolinas looks to be from rain, and, and the, the cold front come from the south, the higher elevations and the tropical storm or hurricane, probably tropical storm at that point, but those that combination is very dangerous. So uh, this could be a significant storm threat in the uh, Carolinas. Here's a, a question uh, that uh, uh, people ask, uh, how about tornadoes? Uh, yes, there is the potential for tornadoes on the right side. Let's say the storm comes in here on this part here, there is a, po a possibility of tornadoes. In general, the tornadoes are not terribly strong, but, but they're like super strong wind gusts and they move very quickly. So don't get hung up on tornadoes. If you're prepared and in a safe spot for a strong hurricane, you're in a safe spot for tornadoes. Um, where did I just saw, I just saw a question here about uh, St. Augustine. Okay, I, there it is. There it is. Mac wants to know about St. Augustine. So St. Augustine, obviously, you're on the opposite coast. Uh, uh, tropical storm force winds are, are likely in St. Augustine, but they'll be coming, most likely coming off the land. So uh, gusty winds, uh, potential for power outages, that kind of thing. But because the storm is, is this isn't... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the, what was the eye storm that, that uh, not the, it wasn't the eye storm, the, uh, Nicole. Nicole, uh, you know, caused so much problem up there, but that came from the ocean side. So this is going to come from the, um, from the other direction. So it'll be over the land by the time it gets there. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Niceville, no, Niceville in the Panhandle is not uh, an issue. Any, any more new questions? Uh, 
got a lot of good questions here. I just before I sign off, I just want to be sure that I've uh, answered all the important ones. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Here's a one, uh, David from Sarasota County. Yeah, so Sarasota County is on the right side, so you're going to be on the so-called dirty side of the storm. So it depends on where it tracks. If it tracks up here in, in the center of the cone somewhere, you know, you're going to have effects, but not as bad effects than if it does what Ian did and track down the right side of the cone. So you need to be ready for the hurricane warning in effect for coastal Sarasota County. You need to be ready for very strong winds, power outages, and hurricane plans you need to be uh, put in effect in Sarasota County and be aware of evacuations for anything uh, related to uh, 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 the coastal areas. So uh, Longboat Key and, and areas right along the coast or near the water, Sarasota County will be making decisions on what they're going to do about that and uh, that will need to be done before the end of the day tomorrow and the water and the, the weather is already going to be deteriorating uh, tomorrow. Okay, so I'm not seeing any new questions so <clears throat> let me uh, wrap it up right now and um, <clears throat> I'll stay with you as long as I can. I'm just uh, I'm checking the feed. Uh, okay, seems to be okay. So, um, all right, folks, uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch with you here, uh, and I'll see you on Fox Weather this afternoon, and I'll try and uh, uh, certainly update you in the morning uh, on face, uh, Facebook, if not before, and we'll see uh, exactly where we stand. Uh, thanks so much, and uh, everybody stay safe, and uh, obviously get your hurricane plans uh, in action. Thanks.